And good morning and welcome to Wesley Way United Methodist Church. We're so happy to see you this morning. Let's stand together now and sing our opening hymn, number 452, My Faith Looks Up to Thee. as we affirm our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Welcome everyone again, especially our guests to our service. We're uh, so happy you chose Wesley Way to worship uh, this morning. Welcome also to all those joining us online. Please take a moment to fill out the attendance cards and the pew pads so we can keep in good touch with you. Uh, also take a moment to check in on social media. 
um, and like our page to help share our church with others outside the walls. A few announcements this morning. This week is our Ash Wednesday service following our Wednesday night dinner. Uh, Worship will begin at 6.30. Everyone is invited to come, even if you have dinner plans elsewhere. Uh, Choir will rehearse right after that service. Uh, We are receiving donations for goodie bags that we are making for our homebound church members in March. The item list is in your bulletin and your weekly email. Uh, Donations can be deposited in the basket under the table in the lobby. Uh, Please have all items in by March 13th. Um, Volunteers are needed in the tech booth during both services for sound and uh, uh, video. Uh, Please see Tim Straw for more information. It's a great way to serve, and uh, as it may seem intimidating, but it's really not hard to to learn what's going on back there. Uh, Our flowers today are uh, given to the glory of God in honor of the Zytel family's joining of the church today by Ann Martin. Um, Now, Pastor Michelle has a few special announcements. I just wanted to um, remind folks again that I'm going to be stepping away for the month of March uh, from the church and from emails and meetings and from worship for a time of spiritual renewal leave. Um, I'm looking forward to that time, even though I know I'm going to miss being here with you guys. Um, so I will be in the office this week, but then next Sunday you'll have, uh, you'll have start having guest preachers for the month of March. And then I'll be back on April 2nd. That'll be my first Sunday back with us here in the church as we uh, get prepared for Holy Week and then move into the Easter season. So I'm looking forward to um, when that time and coming back here with you. In the meantime, if there is a a matter of pastoral care, a need for a pastor's presence, a conversation with a pastor, um, I have made arrangements for you during that time frame while I'm away. Uh, Reverend um, Max Hill, who is one of our local pastors at Union United Methodist Church, and many of you know Max from their family's involvement in this congregation and over at McDonough First. And then Tommy Ross, who's the pastor over at Jodico Road, where my parents worship. Uh, those two gentlemen have agreed to be on call for us in addition to what they're doing in their own congregations. So I just hope that you'll take advantage of them if you have a need for that. Um, they've agreed and I've made these arrangements so that you guys will have pastoral care while I'm away. So how would you reach these people? Well, you do it in the same way you do when I, when I'm on vacation, you'll reach our designated SPR chairperson who will then contact that pastor and get them in touch with you. Uh, in your bulletin, there is going to be, um, there's, it's already there today, a list of our SPR chair people or, or team members, excuse me, who will be on call each week. Arch McGarity will be on call first. His cell phone number is in the bulletin, and it'll be in the weekly emails as well. So if you needed to reach one of these, these pastors, you would reach out to that SPR person, and they would then in turn reach out to the pastor that's on call and connect you with them. If you can't remember, oh my gosh, where is it and who is on call this week, just call the church office. Elisa has all that information, and she can connect you with a, um, a clergy person. So I hope you'll take advantage of that. I also hope that you'll be here in the month of March, uh, to listen to some new voices in the pulpit, to take opportunities for worship and fellowship. We've got some fun stuff planned for you. Uh, Tim and I were talking about things we were going to do. I was like, well, maybe we'll go do this that Sunday afternoon. He said, no, it's game day at the church. I'm going to be at the game day. I was like, right, okay. So, you know, he's going to be here and be involved, and I hope you guys will be as well. And um, there's an insert in your bulletin today that has uh, some of the things that we're going to be doing in March show up for these opportunities to fellowship together with one another in March. So I look forward to that time for you guys and a time for me to um, get rejuvenated and bring back an energized Michelle ready to go at it all again with you. Uh, The other thing I wanted to mention this morning was to give thanks for some extra mile giving that you guys have been doing in the last several months. This is kind of part of who we are as a congregation. And sometimes we make an appeal for things, And you guys meet the need, and then we forget to kind of double back and let you know how it went. So I wanted to share about some of those things this morning. Uh, Back, you know, back in the fall, we did a Serve Sunday, and we prepared kits for hygiene and school kits for UMCOR. And then almost immediately behind that, we made an appeal to you guys to help us build 20 
what we used to call flub buckets, cleaning buckets that would also go to UMCOR. And we gathered up all those supplies, and we're going to construct those buckets in the month of March at one of our, our uh, work days. Uh, so you did that. Then right behind that, we asked you to help participate in Operation Christmas Child. And we had 50 boxes, and we had 49 of those that were returned, filled, that we were able to ship off and have those to be donated around the world. Uh, and then I thought, oh my gosh, we've asked too much. They're not going to probably be able to help as much as we have in past with our angel Christmas tree. But you guys stepped up to the plate again, and we raised $1,626 for our Christmas angel tree back at the end of December. And so I just, I just wanted to give thanks to you for that, the ways that you're continuing to meet needs in our community and to um, meet needs that we make appeals for here at the church. Um, then I wanted to share with you about preschool, but Selena wanted to, to share a little bit. So Selena, if you want to share with us just about the preschool stuff. Yeah, amen, amen. So for the benefit of those that may be watching at home and you may not have been able to hear Selena, uh, through our Krispy Kreme fundraiser and the love offering and, a, and an extra donation from our Ramblers, we've raised $3,282 for the preschool. And so just thank you for that, for your generosity, the ways that you're supporting the work that's happening here at the church. And I just wanted to update you on that. And again, thank you for your generosity and your kindness. Um, let's have a prayer as we begin our worship this morning. <clears throat> uh, Lord God, we thank you for the opportunity to be here, uh, to be in church this morning, but to be amongst our family this morning, here to come together to worship you. Lord, we ask that you would move in our time together today, that it may, might be for the glory of your name, that as we worship you, that you would renew us, revive us, and help us to start afresh. Thank you for what you're doing in us, O oh God. We love you and we give you thanks. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. All right, this is our last Sunday with our scripture memory verse. So without anything on the wall there, we're going to give it a go, and then we're going to sing the hokey pokey version uh, after that. So Ephesians 2.8. Are you guys ready? All right, Ephesians 2.8. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God. Ephesians 2, 8. All right, and let's try to sing it. <laughs> For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God. Ephesians 2, 8 is the memory verse. That's what it's all about. Amen, amen. So you get the month of March a break from memory versing. <sighs> and when I come back in April, we'll have a new verse to work on together. It doesn't mean you have to stop memorizing scripture. It just means it won't be part of what we're doing in worship in, in the month of March. So you might find a new verse or one of our old verses and refresh yourself in it during that time frame. All right, now we have a new family that's joining the church. I'd like to invite the Zytel family to come forward and others that might want to stand with them and support this morning. As they're making their way this morning, this is Michael and Amy Zytel and their son, Asher. Uh, Michael and Amy will be joining today, and Asher will become a preparatory member for membership when he's a little bit older. Uh, Michael and Amy have been worshiping with us now for 
three, four months, something? No, longer than that? Right. Less than that. A couple, a couple of months. A couple of months. Um, and uh, they bring membership to us from Turning Point Church as well as from the Lutheran Church in Texas. And we're excited to have them here with us this morning, joining with us in faith. Uh, they are friends with the Stelter family. They're friends with the Cook family and probably others of you that I'm not aware of too. And we're delighted to have them join with us this morning. So just a couple of, of questions for you guys. You've already professed faith in Christ, and oh, they're going to come up too. Come on up, cooks. Come on up. There you go. Nice, nice. So they already have faith in Christ and have professed that and, um, and are in love with the Lord and look to continue to, to grow in their faith here with us at Wesley Way. So as uh, a member of Christ's universal church, Will you guys be loyal to Christ through the United Methodist Church and do all in your powers to strengthen its ministries? If so, say, I will. I will. As members of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, and your service, and your witness? I will. Members of the household of God, we commend these persons to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. Now, I'm going to read a response, and when I'm done, congregation, you can say, if you agree, amen. Will you give thanks for what God has been doing in them and welcome them in Christian love? Will you join with them in renewing your own vows to be faithful to this congregation with your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness, that God may be glorified in us and through us in Jesus Christ? If so, say, we will. So may the God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may live in grace and peace. Amen. Amen. Let's welcome them to Wesley Way. God bless you. Welcome, Asher. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you God bless you. God bless you. All right. So they'll be in the back as we exit for worship this morning. I hope you'll greet them as you're heading out this morning. And if you are yourself maybe not a member and you're like, I'd like to become a member at Wesley Way, I'd love to visit with you about that. You can just uh, call the office or email and we will work out a time to meet and talk about what it means to be a member, that we're devoted to this place through our prayers for one another, through our presence together in worship and in missions, um, through our gifts that we give to the church, not just financial gifts, but also the resources available to us, that we... Um, are part of the mission and the work that's happening here and that we are um, sharing, uh, witnessing with one another in the work of God as we go about through the world. So I'd love to visit with you more about that and how to be a, a member here at Wesley Way. All right, we're going to release our children now for Children's Church. You can head out to the back of the sanctuary. Mr. Michael is there to receive you guys as you head up for children's worship. And now we'll move to our offering. Do we have a slide up there showing us how faithful we have been? There we go. Um, 29,304. Doing great. And we have an opportunity to, to continue to give. Um, we do have ushers that are going to come forth and pass out um, plates. And then we also have the box in the back. Let us pray. Holy Father, we love you. We praise you. We're here to worship you. Part of worship is giving, giving of our time, talents, and resources, giving special offerings, such as the communion offering for Wesley Way's Benevolence Fund. Thank you that Jesus was all in when he gave 100% of himself for our salvation. Father, you've forgiven us more than we can imagine or deserve. You've given us mercy, grace, faithfulness, and love. For these reasons, we give back to you. In the name of your Son, our Savior, amen.
We come now to a time of prayer to celebrate with one another our joys and our concerns. What things do you have that we can lift up together this morning? Yeah, Angie. Yay, yay. So we give thanks for uh, um, Bella to have had a good, safe time away on a ski trip with a, um, with a friend and church group. And we give thanks for our youth. Uh, they had a great time on the ski trip. And uh, I don't know, Kevin, you want to give a shout out about that? Yeah, we give thanks. All the all the kids and adults came back in one piece and um, they had a good had a great time. Had nice weather and give thanks for that. Um, and thank you to all the adult volunteers that went. Um, we can't do those kind of things without your participation um, to help us um, keep everything safe. Sanctuaries uh, in order as well as to invest in the lives of our kids. So thank you for your your help with that. Other things this morning. Yeah, Sunny. Okay, prayers for Clinton and Lena, missionaries um, abroad. And I don't, I don't know how critical it is, so I don't want to say all that you said for everybody in the whole world to hear, if that makes sense, um, if there's a need for safety for them. But um, so prayers for, for Clinton and Lena as they go through adoption process for their, their young boy in and, and adoption, in an um, orphanage, and um, all the conflict uh, sur- surrounding that. Um, so let's be in prayers for that family. And prayers um, for those across the world that are missionaries. Um, the work that they do is often uh, very dangerous and um, challenging, to say the least. Uh, and then prayers for those in the Ukraine um, and our military. And um, prayers for peace. Um, we, don't, we don't know what that's like uh, in, in, to have all that turmoil and, and strife and fear for your lives and all of that kind of thing. It's, it's different. We don't, we don't experience that kind of war like some other countries do, and we just need to be in prayers for our brothers and sisters around the world. Yeah. Okay. Other things this morning? Yeah, Don? Okay. So her biopsy came back positive for cancer. Okay. Prayers for, what's her name, Don? Carolyn? Okay. Prayers for uh, Don's mother, Carolyn, undergoing treatment for breast cancer. Okay. Um, lift up uh, one, Tim and I's good friend, Lauren Collins. He's been battling with kidney stones, um, and so bad now that one of the stones has blocked, um, the, blocked his kidney. Um, so he's, he's going to have to probably have some surgery or procedure to help with that. Um, so if you'll keep Lauren in your prayers, we'd appreciate it. Yes. Yeah, Michael. Oh, wow. Yes, okay. Prayers for the Zytel's nephew running for uh, sheriff out in Texas. And so prayers for that election and for God's will in that. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, A couple that I wanted to bring to you guys, if you'll keep... Um, Elisa, in our front office in your prayers, her mother, her stepmom, passed away this week um, after a battle with, with cancer. Um, she lives in Arizona, along with Elisa's dad, Steve, and her brother, Adam, and sister-in-law, Jonah. Um, so be in prayers, if you'll be in prayers for them. And, and dealing with grief when you can't be near your family like that, that's hard. Um, but we give thanks that Melanie knew Christ and had peace in the Lord, and she's gone on to glory, and she's not suffering anymore. Uh, but if you'll keep the family in your prayers, uh, we'd appreciate it. Continue prayers for the McGuire family, our, our new director of contemporary worship. Her father passed away last Saturday. Tim and I went to the funeral yesterday, and it was such a beautiful celebration of his heaven-bound journey. 
and celebrating his life. He was a pastor and um, just how God had worked through him, and he played the guitar, and I just learned a lot of really neat things about her dad, and uh, we got to celebrate. It really was a celebration, a joyous time, but continue to keep their family in your prayers as well. And then uh, prayers for Linda Cloutus. Linda um, had, had some health tests and stuff this week that came back good, but she is going to have some eye surgery coming up, correct? And would need our prayers for that, so let's keep Linda Cloutus in your prayers. What else this morning? Oh, yeah, thanks. Yeah. Okay. Remind me your dad's name. Bill. Bill. Thank you. All right. Continued prayers for Amanda's dad, Bill. As he recovers from surgery and her future health. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Tabitha. Um, for Mary yes, thank you. Yes. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Uh, while Eric and Beth were away with the ski retreat with the youth, um, Doris um, just didn't have her hands on her walker right and she fell. Didn't break anything but um, still is kind of banged up, bruised up, and all that, and is at Piedmont Noonan, I think. Does that sound right? I think that's where she is right now, um, and hopefully we'll be able to come home soon. Okay. All right, anything else this morning? All right, well, let's go to the Lord then in our prayers. Um, We'll have silent prayer, and then I will guide us, and we'll close with the Lord's Prayer, which will be on the screen if you have need for that. Let's pray. Lord God, we are thankful for you, thankful for um, the clothes on our bodies, the breath in our lungs, the food in our bellies, or the food that is to come as we depart and have lunch here shortly. Uh, We're thankful for a place to come and worship together. We're thankful for um, the vehicles you provided for us. the ability to, um, to get up and, and arrive and be here today. If we, if we stopped and spent time, we could make a long list, God, of what we have to give thanks for. You are so good to us, and your mercy endureth forever. And your love is never-ending. And even when we, are, um, when we fall short of what you have for us, when we disappoint others, when we um, are distracted by other things, uh, when we're too busy to have time for you, when we are lazy, when we are um, uh, just in struggle uh, with one another, with family, with friends, with, um, with people we work with, uh, when we don't show ourselves as best as we could, y- you love us anyway. <laughs> you love us anyway. That is just such an amazing realization of how great your love is for us. That in the midst of our brokenness, you see us and you embrace us and you love us. And you invite us into new ways and to new paths that you could be glorified in us and through us. So thank you for using us. Because a lot of the time we, we, don't, we, don't, we don't get it right. Sometimes we don't even try to get it right. Oh, thank you, God, for your love for us. Free us for joyful obedience in you. 
Help us, God, as we have such a great need for you. Lord, we have brought to you this morning our loved ones, our friends and our family, our church members, our co-workers, and even strangers who live far away. Have mercy on us, O God. Won't you come into each of these lives, these names we've called out, and bring healing, bring restoration, bring resolution, bring hope, bring peace, bring joy. Do what you see is best. And help us, God. Help us to sit with what is your best. Because it's not always what we want it to be. It's not always the answer we were looking for. Um, but you, you long to move through us even still. So help us, God, to move with you as you press in upon us, that we could look less like ourselves and more like you. Bring about your fruit in us, O Holy Spirit, that the world might know that we are your people. Uh, Lord, move on us in this time of worship today, and as we head into a new week with um, with unknown um, outcomes. Uh, we, we have plans, we have agendas for this week, but we don't know what is to come in the next hour or two or days. But you know, and you are with us. So we are not afraid, but we are excited, and we go forth with passion for you. Be with us. Walk with us. Give us your strength. And Lord, we pray now as you have taught us to pray. And we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen.
And let's stand and sing together, Come Thou Font of Every Blessing. This morning comes from John chapter 4, verses 1 through 10. It says, Now Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard that he was gaining and baptizing more disciples than John, although in fact it was not Jesus who baptized, but his disciples. So he left Judea and went back once more to Galilee. Now he had to go through Samaria, so he came to a town in Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of ground Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about noon. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, You are a Jew, and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for your word that you have given to us that we could know who you are and who we are as your people. We pray that you might reveal it to us any time that we should encounter it, that we might um, know your will for us, know your plan for us, know your ways, and be able to follow in faithfulness. We ask this in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, the first dog I ever owned uh, for myself as an adult was uh, my dog Duke, who was some kind of German Shepherd mix. I uh, love, love that dog, got him at the shelter, and he was, he was great. He was a good guard dog, and he was a good companion. We went hiking and all of those kinds of things. And sometimes if I was going to be gone for a long period of the day, I would put him in the fenced-in backyard of the parsonage, leave him out there in the back, uh, so that you know, if he needed to go to the bathroom and so forth, he could do that and wouldn't have an accident in the house. And I would put a bowl of water for him out there to drink while I was gone during that time frame. And what I began to notice was his custom is I would come back and that bowl of water looked as full as it was when I left it. And I'd been gone for many hours, like the bulk of the day. And then he would come back in the house and immediately guzzle the bowl in the kitchen that was his bowl and drain 
drain that bowl of water. So thirsty. And I'm like, you crazy nut. You had the bowl outside with you the whole time. I don't know why he didn't drink from that bowl. It, it, it's, it wasn't a cleanliness thing. It was the same one. I rinsed it out, brand new water, all that stuff. I'm not sure what the deal was, but he would never do that. I'd leave him outside. He didn't seem to drink the water. He'd come back in the house, and he would drain the bowl in the kitchen that was his water bowl. And in the midst of that repetition, God showed me that I'm not so different from my own dog, where I have the living water available to me and don't drink the water as I should. In our passage this morning, Jesus describes himself as living water. In this interaction with the Samaritan woman, um, he talks about himself in that way. Now, we, we've come to understand living water as that representation of Jesus, right? This fresh water, um, all the, the images and thoughts you have of a fresh, cool spring as being representative of Jesus, the sense of peacefulness, the sense of uh, bringing nourishment, and um, all of those imageries, all that imagery. Um, but in the literal sense of understanding what is, a li- what is living water, it is something that is moving, right? It's like a, a spring. Um, when Jesus talks to himself about living water, he's not specifically meaning that he brings life, though he does. He's using this phrase because that's how um, the, the Israelite people, the Hebrew people would understand different types of water sources, right? So you have like a lake or a body of water that is more um, stable. It's not necessarily flowing and clean in that same kind of way. You would drink from a living spring differently than you would something that was standing water. And in a desert place like Israel is, they would carve out cisterns, these kind of um, a, a kind of a big cavern in the ground to collect rainwater. So if they were passing through an area that didn't have a well or a spring, they could drink the well water that had gathered in the cistern. Um, So when Jesus says, I am living water, that's the best kind of water because it's clean and it's fresh and it's flowing. It's abundant, right? It's always there. A cistern could dry out, but living water was always present. And so Jesus uses that imagery to describe himself as something this Samaritan woman should want. And she is there in at noon. It's not a mistake that John gives us that detail, right? It's the heat of the day when the sun is at its highest and nobody else is there drawing water. They would do it when it's cooler in the morning or in the evening. But she's come at this time strategically to avoid conversations with other people because her lifestyle and habits are not um, not good Jewish behavior, I guess. And uh, it avoids a conflict by just coming at a different time than when everyone else is there. She's had many husbands, and the man she's currently with is not her husband. And so she has a reputation amongst other people as, um, as, as not being maybe as devout or holy as she should be. So she's there in the middle of the day. And Jews and Samaritans didn't interact. John gives us that detail as well. Normally, a Jew would go all the way around Samaria just to avoid interactions with Samaritans. Um, there was a lot of racial bigotry between Jews and Samaritans based on bloodline and purity of that bloodline. And uh, they disagreed with one another about worship of the Hebrew God, of, of our God, the living God. And um, so they, they tried not to interact much. And so that Jesus would go through Samaria is also unusual. But he has a divine appointment with this woman to share with her something different about who God is, and more specifically himself as Messiah. That he is this living water for her. That she, uh, he says, you know, if you knew the living water, you would never have to draw from the well again. You'd have this welling up in you. And she's like, that'd be great. That'd be fantastic. I don't want to come back to this well. Tell me where the spring is. Tell me where the living water is. That's where I want to go. But he's speaking metaphorically about himself, right? And through more conversation, she comes to learn that, and he changes her life, transforms it. Christ is living water for us, but unlike, no, like, like my dog, uh, we sometimes have him with us, but we forget to engage and interact with our awesome Savior. 
Now, I carry water like this around with me all the time. If you spend much time with me at all, you'll see me have these in meetings. You'll see me carry it in and out of the church, some kind of water bottle of some kind. I've got a whole shelf and a cabinet with all varieties, aluminum ones, uh, plastic ones, some that hold a whole liter. I've got one that holds two liters of water. I've got little plastic ones that, uh, that are more like a really industrial Ziploc bag so that you can fold it down. It's super lightweight when it's empty. I mean, I've just got all kinds. And I started carrying water with me when I was in seminary because I saw someone else doing it. And I was like, hey, that's a good idea. I'm in this class for this long period of time and I get thirsty. We don't have a break. I'll just bring my water with me. And now it's habitual, and I'm, I'm hooked on it. If I don't have it with me, I start, I start to panic a little bit, which a friend of mine uh, pointed out that's like a kind of an addiction if you can't be away from your bottle of water. I'm like, well, at least it's a good addiction, I guess, to have it. Um, if I go to the grocery store, I take the bottle of water. If we're going into Atlanta, I take my bottle of water. If I'm going, coming and going from the church, I usually take the bottle of water with me. But if I don't drink it, it doesn't do me any good, does it? If I don't digest it, if I don't consume it, it's, it's nice to have it, but it doesn't really do me any good, right? We need to drink the water. Christ offers himself to us as living water, and we need him. Uh, anybody know what percentage of your body is water? Yeah, the 66, I, I, the internet told me 60%. So yeah, right around that mark, right? That is how much your body is water. You need water. And as one website said that your brain and your heart are 73% water. Your lungs are 83% water, which that surprised me because I want to think about water not being present in the lungs, right? Uh, your skin contains 64% of water. Your kidneys, 79%. And even your bones are 31% water. Our bodies need water water. We need to drink it, and it's important for us. And when you get that thirsty, are you, are you thirsty right now? You get, I mean, she keeps talking about the water. I need to go get a sip. Uh, when you get that thirsty feeling in your mouth, and you're like, or, or you just feel really needing a drink, at that point, you're already dehydrated. That's what I've learned. You're already dehydrated at that point. And sometimes that rumble in your stomach is not the reflex for food. Sometimes it's the body's reflex for water. It's the same. Your body uses both to say, hey, put stuff in me. And we get water from our food. But sometimes we just need to sit down and drink a glass of water. The average human should drink around three to four liters of water a day or about half a gallon of water. We need it. It lubricates our joints and our bones. It's good for our skin. It's good for digestion. Uh, your body needs it for survival. We have to drink the water. But spiritually, we need to drink the water as well. If we, if we um, come and go through the life of the church and in worship and different things, but we don't actually ever connect with Christ, it's like carrying a water bottle around in a desert place and not drinking it. We need to, to consume Jesus and have him be part with us. Right? So the two things that I talk about all the time... Prayer and reading scripture. Those are the ways, the key ways we connect with Christ. We connect with Father, Son, and Spirit through reading his word and spending time in prayer. Mother Teresa was asked in an interview about what she, what she said when she prayed and spoke with the Lord. And she said, I don't say anything. I just sit and I listen. And the interviewer said, well, what does God say to you when you sit and listen? She said, oh, he doesn't say anything. He just sits and he listens. And I thought that was really interesting. Sometimes we think we have to have a lot of words in our time of prayer with the Lord, but sometimes we just need to stop and be still and be present with the Lord. Stop and pause and listen. Um, to, to sit and read God's word and not have to Check it off a list, but read it to hear God speak to us. Um, to read a verse or two and just stop and pause and think, what, what does that mean for me? How is God trying to speak to me? Uh, intimacy with Christ is vital for us, and we need to drink the water. But sometimes we, um, when we get thirsty, we drink other things instead, right? So in a literal sense, we drink sodas, we drink uh, coffee and tea and things like that. But spiritually, we do that as well. We, we consume other things that are not nourishing for us that we think will do the job. Now, this morning, I collected some pond water from the pond in our subdivision. Can y'all see stuff floating around in there? Yeah. <laughs> um, anybody want to give it a go? Feeling thirsty? 
Lots of, lots of nervous giggling, lots of no thank yous. Uh, I had some, some more uh, pronounced remarks in the first service. They were like, no, no, no thank you. I don't want any of that. Um, sometimes we put things in ourselves. We consume things that are not good for us. And um, if we're not careful, it causes problems, right? If you were to sit and drink this, you would probably have a very upset stomach and an unpleasant rest of your day and your evening. At best, you might even end up in the hospital at worst, right? Um, In Jeremiah chapter 2, Jeremiah is um, scolding the people of Israel for their disobedience to God. He says, has a nation ever changed its gods? Yet they're not gods at all. But my people have exchanged their glory for worthless idols. Be appalled at this, O heavens, and shudder with great horror, declares the Lord. My people have committed two sins. They have forsaken me, the spring of living water, and have dug their own cisterns, broken cisterns that cannot hold water. Uh, We try to consume things that are unhealthy for us. Um, A lot of it's just excess. You know, it's not always bad necessarily, but it's just too much and we overdo it. You know, you can eat at Chick-fil-A once a week, and that's probably not going to hurt you so much. But if that's your entire nothing against Chick-fil-A, any fast food, if that's all that we take in all the time, it's going to pay a toll on our bodies, right? If you just drink sugary sodas all the time, it's going to pay a toll on your body. A lot of what we, what we digest is maybe not necessarily bad, but it's in wrong proportions, um, spiritually thinking about that. You know, what are the things that we are consuming just through our interactions in the world that are unhealthy for us? You know, watching too much TV, too much time on social media, too much time in the news, too much time um, spent on recreation, not enough time spent on devotion and, and, and study of the Word of God. Or, you know, there's this, these imbalances that we get in our lives. And we're moving into the season of Lent, which is a great time to sort of strip away the excess. Uh, Lent is the season for fasting and repentance and almsgiving, and a, a great time for us to stop and look and go, all right, where, where is it just, there's just too much in my life? And, and where is there not enough of God in my life? And how does that all need to be shifted around so that I am nourished by the living spring that is Jesus Christ? And what do I need to set aside, and what do I need to pick up? that I might continue to grow in faith. Worship is important. Missions is important. Service is important. Fasting and generosity and reading scripture and spending time in prayer. I mean, all those things grow us in our walk with Christ. But if we just carry it with us and we don't actually engage with Christ, then we've missed out on it. Drink Drink the water, the good water, the living water that is Jesus Christ, and not exchange him for broken cisterns or corrupted, polluted resources. But there's a place within us that longs for Christ, that can only be satisfied by him. But we got to drink it and just carry him around with us. We need him to be actively moving in our lives. So I want you to ponder that uh, for for the next week and over the next month as we are in this time of Lent. What is, what is Christ calling for us to set aside? What, where is there too much in our lives where it just needs to be set aside that we might get back to simpler, basic things? You know, where are our words too much? And maybe we need to just be still and be silent. Is there a book of the Bible maybe that you've never read that this would be an opportunity for reading that and studying that? Or maybe it's just... Um, just looking for ways to grow more in your faith and pursuing those. Drink the water. You need it. We're so, so thirsty. Christ offers himself to us as a living, fresh water spring. And he longs to transform us. But there's participation on our part. And we're challenged and invited to come. Let's have a prayer together. Lord Christ, we're so thankful for how you bring yourself to us. Here we are in a, in a desert-weary land, and, and we are exhausted and spent and worn out. We are thirsty, O oh God. Forgive us because we've, we've tried to take care of things on our own, you know, with, with consumption of one kind or another. Too much food, too much drink, too much screens, too much spending, <laughs> too much. 
Bring us back to a simple, basic place with you where you renew our souls. Help us, God, to walk with you and find life everlasting. Renew us this day, O oh God. Bring joy and bring life. Works in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit that we pray. Amen. Amen. This morning we have an opportunity to celebrate with one another in Holy Communion. Our liturgy will be on the screen here for us. And if you do not have a communion packet, then you'll need to grab one of those. We also have gluten-free wafers if you need a gluten-free element. Does anyone not have communion this morning, that an usher can bring it to you. And those that are watching at home can prepare juice, water, or cracker, bread, and that will work with us as well. Our liturgy begins with an invitation that Christ invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Hmm. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Now with the great thanksgiving. May the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. God, you showed your love in creating and forming and molding us. You breathed life into our lungs. Your love is amazing. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ. Lord Christ, you show us what true love is and your sacrifice Greater love has no one than to lay down their life for their friends. And by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, he gave thanks to God for it, broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to God for it, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ that we might be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let's go ahead now, if you have not already, and separate the wafer from the juice. And dear friends, you're invited to partake with us, if you're United Methodist or not, if you're of another Christian church or not, if you come from another faith background or not, if this is your first time ever or not, you're invited to come and partake. All are invited to be part of the table of the Lord. 
And when you're all together, if you look up here. Let's lift up the bread together. Dear friends, this is the body of Christ that was broken for you. Take and eat. Amen. We hold up the cup in the same fashion. Dear friends, this is the blood of Christ that was spilled out for you. Take and drink and find new life. Amen. Lord Christ, we give thanks for all that you've done for us. You are so, so good to us. Help us, Lord, as we are renewed now with your presence to go forth and share Christ to all we who meet. Let others may know the good news of life with you. For it's in your holy name we ask and we pray. Amen. As you're leaving this morning, there is a trash can uh, towards the back of the sanctuary. You can deposit your, um, your leftover materials. Um, also, if you have a gift for the communion offering that goes to help, the benevol- the, uh, help with benevolent needs in our community, both that we support through the church as well as communities that we um, give resources to so that as they help individuals, uh, you may give so with the basket that's marked so on the table as you exit the sanctuary this morning. Now let's stand together as we have our closing benediction. Dear friends, Christ himself has been, given, has been given to you. He has given himself that you might have life. He is the living water that we are to drink from, that we might never be thirsty again. Oh, come and drink and taste and see that the Lord is good. Go in his peace. Amen. Amen. Amen.